1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York with Blind Melon and No Rain. Good afternoon. It's Ophie and Anthony. Hello. And we're ready to rock once again for you this week. Yes, starting all over again on Monday. Yes. Uh, thank you for everyone who's uh, left their fart noises for the boss. Can you believe it? It made a great impression today. We had a fun meeting with the boss today. He played back all the messages uh, that everybody left him over yeah. the weekend. Yeah, and we're going to put some of those on the air today, actually. Pretty funny. Actually, and he also told a great story about his uh, lovely physical. Yeah, he had to go for a physical. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, the, the older you get, uh -huh. the worse your physical exam is. Yeah. So you remember when you were a kid, it was easy. You just, you know, the stick out your tongue. Uh, the most traumatic thing was the grab the... The bullies. Yeah, and then turn, turn and cough. Turn and cough. Right. But then you get a little older, and they're just probing and prodding you, well, everyone. Well, our boss was just telling us a, just a horrifying story of what went on with his physical. Doctors tickling his prostate. There was Vaseline involved. <laughs> well, I, I mean, <laughs> you would hope so. Actually, KY. KY, right. And he was KY. KY. Like, did you look the doctor in the eye after you did that? Uh, no, not at all, actually. The worst part is when he said the doctor gets done, you know, pulls his finger out, takes the glove off, and he's like, I'm going to leave the room now. There's some paper towels over there you can clean up. Clean up. Like, it's just like a whore. You just toss the side. There's a 20 on the night table. I got to go. <laughs> He was violated. It's, it just makes me laugh to know that the boss was violated over the weekend. <laughs> totally violated. <laughs> and then he's got to send in a stool sample. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember, we've talked about this in the past. I was sick once, and uh, they wanted a stool sample. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Nothing sacred. Sit down for a second. I feel like I'm getting another one. <laughs> You're getting the finger again? We just want to know about the stool sample. We were just about to talk about that. Ugh. <laughs> I love the collection well, process. You know, yeah. Well, they, they this was just a regular physical, right? There's yeah. nothing wrong with you just getting things checked Not out. Yet. Okay. <laughs> I haven't gotten the results back. Right. I'm not feeling so hot now. No, so, I wouldn't. So the doctor decided you have to give a stool sample. No, the nurse did. I guess the doctor did. Yeah, all right. And they give you a little envelope. <laughs> and uh, in the envelope, there are like three popsicle sticks. Yeah. Okay, and then there's this little little kit. It looks like a little uh, litmus test kind of kit. And it's got a cardboard, uh, like, you know those calendars at, at Christmas time? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, yes. They pop the doors you, Yeah, open. you pop the doors. Oh, sure. sure. Right, the right. well, they, they, these, like, three windows, and you, you open them up, right? And, and you put your Yule lock in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, wait a minute. Oh, yes, guys, that's, but that's, that's the last part of it. All right. Next, before mailing it, it back into the lab. Yeah. The part of how do you get it? See? Yeah. I would think you would just, you know, use the toilet like you normally would, and right. then take the stick and maybe get a scraping. No. Nope. How do no. you do it? They, they have, that's what the paper towels are for. <laughs> they have extra strength towels in there. That they give you? Oh, yeah. For this procedure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Apparently, as it's, been, as it's been explained to me, I haven't tried this yet. <laughs> but uh, you're supposed to catch your, you know, kind of be... <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can figure that out. So you catch it. So you you, you actually well, hold I just the paper can't even towel. Picture how, what I'm gonna? Where am I gonna be? Just doing this, you know? <laughs> in the woods somewhere, like a like primeval man or something, like a wolf <laughs> in the woods. So you you actually hold the paper towel in your hand and then yeah just... yeah and then you just uh, that's how you get your sample. Okay, that sounds great and for a certain consistency. You lay, it, lay it out on the counter and then take these little popsicle sticks and yeah, you take a swatch, a swatch. <laughs> Okay. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, look. In all seriousness, no wonder Daryl Strawberry didn't. Right, you know, let it go to the doctor. Who would yeah. want to go through this? Right, they got to make these things a little more pleasant so people won't mind going so much. Well, the best part about it is tell them what you have to do with the the sample when you get it. Don't you have to mail it in? Oh yeah, <laughs> you mail it. It yeah. goes through the U.S. mail with your <laughs> cards to your grandma. Yeah, is, is people's. Probably every day, probably thousands upon thousands of these things. Yeah. You know, they even make you have to put your own stamp on it. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, don't get the ones you got to lick. I don't know how much it's going to weigh. Yeah. Oh, come on. There you go. There's got to be a better way with technology today. I mean, it, it seems primitive that a guy's got to reach in there to feel your prostate. Mm -hmm. There's no camera, no Jetsons-like screen you could stand behind. Some guy's got to take his finger. 
and violate you? Now, did you like when the doctor used his fingers? Or <laughs> No guy's going to like that. Oh, Well, no. let's see. Maybe he liked it. I don't know. No. no. No one would like that. Did he feel violated? Did he save it for last? Was it like oh, the last yeah, thing he did? Thing. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's the closer. That's a big right. close. Very nice. <laughs> the encore. You know, God, it's horrible. You know that John Mellencamp is sitting in the lobby right now listening to this whole conversation? <laughs> oh, oops. He's probably sitting there going, what did I get myself <laughs> into here? The doctors will see you now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations, and hopefully everything's uh, fine. Yeah. With your samples. Yeah. Very uh, nice. Okay. Let us know. Let me know when you go. <laughs> I have a good doctor to refer you to. Actually, I, I was supposed to, uh, you know, collect my, my sample. I, I just decided to blow it off. He never mailed it in. Huh? No way. See, that's what happened to Daryl. Right? I just couldn't deal with it. See? But I turned out to know that I'm healthy, so. How do you know? Yeah, you don't true. know. That's true. I mean, he was in pain for a while and apparently had symptoms. Oh, God. He sort of went in a long time ago, they're saying. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Eat grass and water all day long, I guess. Yeah. Ugh. Oh. Well, uh, John Mellencamp is waiting to talk to us, so. All right. Thank you, Gary, you our boss. better offer, huh? Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy the, the farts on your answer machine? It was great. <laughs> seven messages. <laughs> you want to call a truce or... or... No, I'm fine. Oh, wow. Well, so you want the know. listeners... Cause some of them are pretty funny. You want the listeners to continue doing that? No. Just like say the word. Different. Different. We could call a truce right now, if you like. At least tell me a joke or something. <laughs> They told something you. different. Very good. W were they? Yeah. We're going to cart a few Clever. of them up and put them on the air. So, All right. It's Gary, our boss. On the way, we got John Mellencamp, 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. It's Opie, it's Anthony, and we got to say hi to John Mellencamp live in the NEW guys? studios. He, how you doing? Good. He just told us a lovely little story about his prostate exam that he had recently. Personal. <laughs> Might not want to. Uh, you got to share that with our listeners. Well, you know, when you get to be 40 years old, they make you get these things, right? Yeah. Oh. So uh, I had to go get one, you know, for insurance, all that stuff. And I walk in there not knowing what was in front of me or behind me, whatever the case may be. <laughs> and I saw that thing laying there, right? And I looked at the nurse and I said, is he going to stick that in my rear end? And she goes, oh, yes, he is. <laughs> and I said, well, you better start kissing me, baby. <laughs> the minute that goes in because... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bad thing. Not yeah. a good thing. No, not at all. Well, certain things will save your life, man. It's just sometimes you got to sit back and go, is it worth it? Is yeah. my life really worth it? Well, last well I told him. I told him, you know, he was about four minutes into it, and I looked up and I said, you better get on with this, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, move along. Get on with this. <laughs> right, get it over with. Wow. Right. And he, he, he hustled it up and... You know, but by the time he was done, I was kind of enjoying it. <laughs> Making another, another appointment for the next day. Can you see me again tomorrow? Wow, what a way to start an interview! But all right, how are you, John? I'm doing great. I was just reading an article uh, on you, and I uh, like getting on radio here and humiliating you. I, well, well, yeah, we do it all the time. We do it all the time. Join the fun. So, uh, I was just reading about you in Entertainment Weekly. Yeah, you're full of angst. Oh no! You know that I saw that article. <laughs> Made you seem pissed all the time. No, I know. I had I wasn't. I hadn't even cleared my throat and said those things yeah. before I sat down. I didn't even know he was interviewing me. Really? Well, you guys know that. Yeah. Right? Well, actually, the mics aren't even on here yet. Well, so we're not, <laughs> we haven't started the interview yet ourselves. But I, I hadn't even. You know, I was in some restaurant, and the maitre d hadn't even like said we could smoke in the building yet. Yeah. You know, and I was just kind of talking about Polygram and and the record company. And then once we sat, it was three minutes. Mm -hmm. It turned out to be the whole article. Yeah. yeah. You know, that stuff happens. Yeah, right? they just grab the uh, thing that they think everybody wants to hear. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could, you could, you know, really say something heartfelt and you would feel important. Mm -hmm. Never be in the article. No. Call somebody a dirty name. Yeah. All over the place. Well, it said you, you don't like uh, suspenders and uh, cigars. So me and Anthony, we're going to get <laughs> suspenders for this interview. But well, no, I just don't. I'm not, I'm not that I don't like cigars or suspenders. I just think that. Uh, there's a certain element of uh, people, corporate people, who are kind of mucking it up for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think of today's music scene? Oh, it's completely changed. It sure has. It's totally different, you know, uh, as when I started out. And, you know, radio's changed, everything. You know, it's all corporate America's changed the whole the whole landscape of, uh, of this business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of good music out there. Uh, but, but if you get to hear it is one thing. I mean, I don't I don't know about your guys' playlist, but I know that every playlist in this country is tightened up to uh, tremendously. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, just think back ten years ago, and then think ten years before that. You know, when I first ca came to radio stations, 
They were still playing records. That's how much has changed. Yeah, <laughs> Look what we do. Rolling joints. Our, our, <laughs> our turntables are over there. We just put our lunches on there now. Yeah. And our I mean, coats. They don't even use them anymore. But yeah. So that I mean e even the technology changed. The uh, the uh, playlist the change. And then you know there used to be AOR and CHR. Mm -hmm. That was the business, right? Mm -hmm. There was two formats of radio. Now I don't even know. You know, you gotta you gotta tell me now. What is it? Right, you know, alternative rock, soft yeah. rock, this you know, classic rock. Rock. yeah, all this right. stuff. And I re and I listen to these stations. It is hard for me to identify the difference. I can identify like a real heavy station, but the rest of it, you know, I have a hard time identifying. Right? Are yeah. you are you into Hanson? Yeah, my favorite band. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for those guys, you know. That's true, yeah. I do. They're getting pulled through it right now. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, and then all of a sudden one day they won't be, and they'll be. All of 15. Right. Yeah. Has been since 15. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you listen to when you're not playing, when you're cruising around town? Well, I try to get any W in, but... Uh, right on. It's, it's hard, you know, in Indiana. It's, <laughs> well, don't you live in New York part... 50,000. <laughs> right, that's just not oh, that. baby, go. <laughs> don't you live in New York part-time, though? Well, I have been, but I don't... No, I don't have, I don't have a place here. No? No, I, li I stay in hotels, but uh, I've been here so much in the last couple months that I, you know, I'm going to have to start paying taxes or something. Right. Have you been following the Yankees? Uh, the whole town is just juiced for the Yanks. No, I was in Chicago the other day. I was following Chicago, though. Mm -hmm. They asked me to sing the uh, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, <laughs> but I declined. <laughs> well, you have to do the Harry Carey version yeah, yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah, but everybody was mad at me, you know, because yeah. they all wanted tickets. Oh, man, you didn't do that. You look like <laughs> I said, I didn't want to get on TV and absolutely humiliate myself, even though I don't mind getting on radio doing it. I don't want to get on TV <laughs> yeah. and do it. Right, exactly. They're not going to ask you to talk about your colon on TV, don't they? Well, they might. <laughs> they might, huh? Yeah. You want to take a call? There's a bunch of people that want to ask you a question. Oh, dear, who knows what these people are going to say. Who knows? Yeah. We'll try one. If it's bad, we'll, we'll hang up on that. Okay. Hi, Andy. W, you got a question for John Mellencamp. Yes. I just want to know how he went through his little exam without being put to sleep. <laughs> because I go through that every six months. I got a mad, bad stomach. <laughs> John and I get a dose Mellencamp of on the phone. I go to bed. <laughs> He's talking about the pipe. Do you have yeah, a pipe. You got John on. What else can you ask him? Well, how, how did I do it without getting put to sleep? Yeah, why well, my doctor puts me to sleep. I get a shot of Valium before he does that to me. Well, just scribe harder. And maybe you like the Valium. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it's not about uh, the, the exam at all. Maybe it's about the drugs. I don't know. Well, that's the best part of it. All right, man. Thanks a lot for calling. <laughs> Jesus. Well, there you go. There's a, a sample of our listeners, John. Great, huh? Sorry. So we got to deal with every so, day. So the new album comes out tomorrow. You're reaching for the cigarettes, see? Now, yeah, he said, now, if I, he said if I said one funny thing, I could smoke. There I'm you fine. go. Light up if you got it. So the new album comes out tomorrow. Are you excited about it, obviously? Yeah, it's my 15th album. Yes. 15. That's a lot, isn't it? Wow. That is a lot. A lot of people have gone by the you know the wayside in that time. You know, I thought it was a lot until I read that when Frank Zappa died, he'd recorded uh, 65 of them. <laughs> 65 How do you even hours? do that? How do you do that? That's impossible. He did it. Yeah. He did it. And like Dylan's at like 53. So my little old piddly 15 kind of pales <laughs> in comparison to... You got some fun albums, though. Yeah, well, I got a lot of work in front of me to catch up with those guys. Now, the first band you were in was when you were in like fifth grade, huh? Yeah. What was the first song you ever sang? Do you remember? Uh, I think Farmer John or something like that. Yeah. I'm in love with your daughter. You remember that one? Uh-huh. Oh, you could not. You're not. <laughs> I'm just nodding. I'll agree with you. How could you still smoke? Come on. I mean, I is that the one easy. vice you can't give up? It's easy. You just put a match to some tobacco <laughs> and it burns up, man. How could I still back to having a hard time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I've, ta I'm, I, I've talked myself into that. You know, I exercise. I don't eat the way I used to. I'm on the cholesterol medicine. So you got to have the one vice? Yeah. This is all, you know, this is all I have in my life that I do this from. Really? I didn't swear. Yeah. That's it. No drinking or anything? No, I haven't drank since 1971. I have really? not been drunk since 1971. Wow. you got to try it again. I, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's changed a little bit since then. Could be. Uh, and I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't touched drugs since like 1972. Well, the last time I got stoned and drunk was 1972. I was in college. I was with a guy. I was riding shotgun in a car. We went over a railroad track, and the, I was in a junky old car. The, the door fell open. I fell out of the car, and the car behind me about ran over me. Wow. And I got my ha I had real long hair, and my hair got all tangled up in the railroad track. <laughs> and I couldn't raise my head up, and I said, Tim, come, you know, and I thought, this is it, man. <laughs> this is it for me with being drunk and disorderly. And that made you change? 
What does your wife think about the cigarette smoking still? She hates it. Yeah, I she bet. Hates it. She hates it. Uh, you know, I get griped at by everybody. So why don't you guys gripe at me some more? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know why? Because you're, just, you're, you're talking about smoking cigarettes, and everybody out there knows that you had a heart problem. Oh, they but was know. that attributed to eating? No, it was attributed to smoking. Was it? <laughs> Jesus, what are you doing? <laughs> no, it was attributed to having high cholesterol. You know those commercials on TV? Where they say, you know, if you have high cholesterol and you want to enjoy your family, take this, this pill. Right. And you get this, your blood turns into glue. <laughs> They're not kidding. Really? I mean, I used to be able to, if, if, if I would cut myself, this jelly stuff came in. <laughs> red. <laughs> didn't really look like blood, but I guess that's... I, I, I really got thick blood, don't I? <laughs> wow. My well, God. my cholesterol was a 425. That's high. No, uh, that's off the... That's, off the, that's off the scale. Yeah. That's you got that scale. under control, though. Well, you know what? I mean, this is how smart I am. In, like, the late 80s, doctors were telling me, man, you need to go on this new cholesterol medicine. Okay, yeah, well, am I all right now? They go, yeah, you're all right now. Mm -hmm. See ya. I just never did it, you know? I'm, I'm like, you know, like a lot of guys. It's like, oh, yeah, right, I need that. No, I'll get it later. You don't want to deal with it until yeah. later. Yeah. Right. And later showed up. All right. <laughs> later showed up. I yeah. think we have a, a better shot at a question here. Let's try one more, all right? Hey, Jeff. Yo, Jeff. Yeah. What do you got for John? Hey, John, I was wondering uh, if you ever thought of going out and doing an acoustic tour with just your fiddle player and uh, bass player kind of bare bones. Yeah, you know, uh, oddly enough, I suggested doing that in 1987 uh, uh, to the record company I was with, and they looked at me, because I didn't think, you know, I, I needed their support, and they said, oh, we don't think that'll ever work. <laughs> of, course, of course, the next year they started unplugged on MTV. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and I know why you, you still smoke. You don't want to lose your voice. That's right. It's the best part of that's it. That's right. That's right. Without, Gives you that gravel itch, right? That's right. Without the cigarettes, I turn into Streisand or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff. Thanks for the call. Thanks. All right. Uh, we did get a fax here. Uh, people want to know why you don't like being called Cougar anymore. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind it. See, I mean, they, you know, guys, you can't believe what you're reading the, in the paper. Well, that's why I'm asking you. I'll, I'll no, find out from you. I don't care. People can call me. You know, I've been called lots worse things than Johnny Cougar. <laughs> yeah. Well, because a lot of people, when they found out you were coming in, said, uh, don't call him Cougar. No, that didn't bother like me. Like the Niagara Falls bit. Slowly I turn. Yeah, it's, that's, it's, that's not true. I mean, it's it, it's that's that's something that, you know, these guys that write in these magazines or write newspapers need something to write about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, of all the people in rock and roll, I guess that me, for some reason, I've gone through the biggest name transformation of anybody, right? True. So it's like, oh, he don't like it. I don't care. <laughs> I just don't want to know my album covers. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And my name, nobody ever called me Johnny. Nobody ever called me Cougar. Uh, and then uh, I thought, well, I have an opportunity to change it to my real name. I should. It's a stupid, phony name. I don't consider myself a stupid, well, I do a little. Uh, <laughs> phony, well, a little, I guess. A person. And I just don't want that stupid name on these album covers. You know, this is what I'm doing with my life. I don't want some other guy to take the fall for me. There you go. Oh, birthday. Sense. Your birthday's Wednesday? Yes. What are you going to do for your birthday? Uh, do David Letterman. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Raw, yeah, get to go do David Letterman. You know, so uh, that's my birthday party. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Dave's you know. a lot of fun. Yeah, I like him. He likes me. It's uh, It'll be okay. Right. Maybe I'll go out and have something to eat after we're done. I don't know. Cool. I also found out today you got a book of uh, paintings. I didn't know you were a painter. Yeah, yeah, I've been painting for a long time. Mm -hmm. I could always draw. You know, in high school, I used to draw pictures of naked girls, and everybody thought it was funny. <laughs> we used to draw, like, just band logos on our books. That yeah. was the best I could do. <laughs> well, that's, you know, I, I, I drew that stuff, too. But, you know, when I was growing up, my mom uh, painted, and so I saw oil paint and stuff, and I've always kind of painted. But I started painting real seriously in the mid-'80s, in the middle of a divorce. So, uh, it must have been happy stuff. Oh, it was really <laughs> joyful. Make a joyful noise. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just, uh, you know, I was having a terrible time with uh, my lifestyle, so I needed to stay home, and so that kept me at home. And I like being able to do something when you get done doing it. You go, hey, look, I got to do that. I made yeah. See what I made today? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Hang it on the fridge with yeah. a magnet. That's right. <laughs> so. actually, actually, someone has good timing here. It says, uh, was it hard on your career going through three marriages? Did you ever get depressed? Well, uh, what do you think? Uh, I thought those women liked me, see? That was really depressing when I found out they didn't like me enough. Oh, you th they didn't like you? you no, they didn't like me. Of course not. They divorced me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might have divorced that. I mean, I don't want this to sound any way, but 
in a humble way, but I was a terrible womanizer, you know. And you couldn't blame. I mean, there would be no woman on the face of this earth that would have put up with the. Let's face it, guys aren't worth a crap till they're forty. That's all they're doing. <laughs> really. They're just not worth anything. You, I mean, you can't trust them. And you were living the life too. You must have had them thrown at you. Well, I don't know about that, but I was in a rock band. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was in a rock band, and and it was the seventies and it was the eighties. You know, and. uh there wasn't any of these diseases hanging around. Correct. And it was a whole different, uh, a whole different landscape in America. Do you regret it? No. All right. No, I don't regret it. I regret uh, hurting uh, the women that I was married to, and I regret hurting my children. But I don't regret uh, being in a rock band, and uh, uh, I've been very fortunate, and I've uh, I've done a lot better than I ever anticipated doing, and you know I'm still doing it, and. Uh, no, I don't regret any of that, but I, I, I at moments feel uh, bad for those women and my kids. Mm -hmm. But everything's cool as can be. You know, it's not like my kids are like, they don't ever see me and I don't have relationships with them. I'm with them all the time, you know. And I got two more guys. I got, <laughs> I got five kids. Wow. And uh, I got two young guys who uh, one is, is mean and one is uh, tough. So... These two guys just beat the hell out of each other every single... That's my job as referee now. Mm -hmm. I'm a referee between a three-year-old and a four-year-old. Beating the hell out of each other. <laughs> How things change. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to be doing an in-store uh, Wednesday at Tower Records. Where yeah. is it? Broadway and 66, right? Yeah. It's the Bro first in-store I've done, I bet, in maybe 20 years. Uh-huh. And you're going to mm. be playing there. Yeah, yeah. At, uh, I believe, around 6.30. This coming Wednesday. I, I don't... Or more or less, maybe a little later. 7 o'clock. About 7 o'clock. Something like that. People should get there early if they want a good seat. But I've never even entertained the idea of doing one of these things because, uh, first of all, when they used to do them in the 70s, they never worked. Did you guys ever see Spinal Tap? That was of great. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting there, no one showed up. The last, the last one I did was just like that. I did, <laughs> I did one in Philadelphia in 1978, which I think was the last in-store I ever did. And I show up, and there's a, a, a the local radio guy, and the guy at the radio at the record store doesn't know we're coming. There's no stock in the store. There's no <laughs> records. There's no posters up. He didn't have a place for us to say, "What the hell are you guys doing here? What do you want?" And the guy's coming. Goes, "Oh, I messed up. I'm," you know. And now <laughs> this like and, well, and now this guy is like a president of a record company. Really? He wow. was a local guy then and screwed up an in store, and now he's president of a record company. So go figure that out. <laughs> so make sure you see John Wednesday is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tower Records. Uh, he'll be playing live at 7. Actually, we got a couple of VIP passes that we'll give away to the 10th and 11th caller right now at 212-757-1027. Also, you're playing the Bowery Ballroom. When is that? Uh, tomorrow night. That's right. Tickets still available? All sold out. So you'll have to see Four Finger Louie on the sidewalk for a ticket. <laughs> Scalp. No, but we're coming back. I think we're playing Madison Square Garden. In December sometime. Okay. Cool. Well, either that or the Meadowlands. I don't know which one. Well, I got a um, copy of your latest CD. We can play any song you want. Which one would you like to hear? Your playlist allows it? I'll play it for you. Who cares I about playlists? Know. My favorite song is... Uh, I don't care. Play the single. <laughs> <laughs> you had the chance to play anything you want. We'll play uh, the single another ten times today. Okay. We'll we play, love that record. Well, play the, play the first song. That's my favorite song. Fruit Trader? Yeah. Okay. Off John Mellencamp's latest album. Can you stick around for a little bit, or sure. should we, uh, okay, let's check this out, and we'll talk to John a little bit more here. You guys let me smoke, I style day. That's sure. fine. <laughs> 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, another track from John Mellencamp's latest CD, that's Fruit Trader. He'll be doing an in-store this Wednesday on Broadway and uh, 66th Street, and he'll be performing probably that song, maybe. So now you guys got thrown out of Boston for what reason? <laughs> uh -oh. See, he's turning the tides on us, see? <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, we've told the story. We, yeah. we told the whole, uh city of Boston that the mayor died in a car accident for April Fool's. I, I, I think that's that's kind of almost... You know, almost funny. That's almost what it, funny. <laughs> that's almost. what they said up there. Well, but it, you know, if you'd have softened it up somehow, we, you know, they didn't get killed. Something else happened to it. Well, Hindsight. if you knew our show, yeah. it, it was obviously a joke, but then like the French listeners... You know, took it serious, and then it exploded from there. Yeah, it was it was softened up just for the fact that it was on our show. You don't tune to CNN for a dick joke, and you don't tune to our show for hard hitting news. Right. So right. we had just, we had like uh, hard news reports on stuff, and we never did news on our on our radio show. Yeah, I know, but you know, some people got no sense of humor. No. Well, well that's what we found out. Well, yeah. actually, a lot of people had a sense of humor. It was that small percentage that didn't have a sense of humor, we found, were very powerful in Boston. And, and you know what, I bet? What? 
I think those guys had on suspenders. <laughs> and they smoke cigars, John. Right. So, so, well, you know, old-time cigar smokers, you got to admire. Guys been smoking them for years. But a guy that just started smoking in the last two years. Picking man. it up to be cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, just went out and bought the humidor and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah brand new. Everything's brand new. <laughs> Strange yeah. news. Cigars new. There's yeah. a lot of those bars in Manhattan, too. I, I, oh, they still are. Oh, I walk by them all the time. I laugh. It's the middle of the day, and they're drinking their martinis and, and smoking their huge, thick cigars, yeah. What's your take on uh, what's happening in Washington? Uh, I, I think it's... I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for Clinton. Yeah. You know, I think that... Uh, I think this is terrible. I think it's embarrassing. I think it's an embarrassment to this country. I think it's an embarrassment to everybody who watches it and pays attention to it. I just think it's a, co a colossal a waste of money and mm -hmm. our time and... You know, there's so many other important things that we could be focusing on, whether he did that or not. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that it was a good thing what he did, but I'm just saying, you know, so what? And besides, what? Nobody thinks the President of the United States is a liar. I thought that's why they hired him. Yeah. He was the best liar. <laughs> yeah. He's the best liar we got. He's president, you know? <laughs> I mean, what are we, we're surprised with, you know, like, Kenny, did, Kenny didn't lie about the Bay of Pigs and... Johnson didn't lie about Vietnam, and you know what? He, and this guy's lying about having sex. Right. You just what, don't think the Oval Office is going to be like you know John's tour bus was back in the eighties? <laughs> well, but hold on for a second. Why would you think it wouldn't be? Uh, I, I, I think know. it would be. I mean, that's your that's your illusion of of what of what it is. What's the office like in this uh, in this radio station? Well, we who's got, working in it? A bunch, there, of, yeah. a bunch of men, right? You know, you guys know what men are like. I mean, I'm not surprised <laughs> at all. I mean, I'd be surprised if Nixon used it for that. But <laughs> he used it for other things. <laughs> but the rest of those guys, I don't know. I mean, I bet you Roosevelt or... I think it's just time to move on. I get it. Because, I mean, there's other issues uh, facing this country that are pretty serious. Yeah, I think both sides have lost their mind, to tell you the truth. Yeah, because, I mean, you can't turn on a program on Sundays, and that's all they're talking about. And these congressmen can be doing all, something different with their time and effort, yeah. like uh, Social Security and the homeless and the educational system in this country and well, Farm Aid. Well, poli <laughs> the, 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 politi the politically correct, you know, it, it, I really... I don't know, it really irks me because, I, you know, it reminds me of the 50s. I know none of you guys were alive in the 50s, but I was. And, you know, there were certain things that you just couldn't do. You couldn't have your hair touch your ears. Oh, that's not good. And all these rules that the politically correct have laid out for us, really, are, it steals our freedom. Even though some of them are right, you know. Some of them, you know, some are probably good ideas. But the, the thought that it's getting rammed down our throat, you know. I mean, like, let's take cigarette smokers, for an example. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, they're down on us guys. Right. We are scum of the earth. You can drive down the streets of Manhattan and you can see us all huddling outside the building. <laughs> Exiled. Know, yeah, you know, pushed outside the building. And really, if you wanted to do what was correct, why didn't everybody just go nuts when all those uh, guys that ran those tobacco companies a couple of years ago got on television in front of a Senate subcommittee and said, nicotine is not addictive. <laughs> we all knew they were lying, but you didn't see anybody pitching a bitch then. Right. They just kind of said, well, you know, yeah, those, you know, they're doing their job. It's a... It's okay. Of course, all those guys got fired, you know, a couple of years later when, you know, the truth that nicotine is addictive. I mean, who would, you know, who yeah. who could even doubt that? Yeah, right? well, it's because tobacco is a big business in this well, country. Well, okay. Now, so if the politically correct want to be correct, mm -hmm. go after those guys. Don't go after the us poor addicts and make us stand out in the front. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, right. just, I just had to dump that curse out, but that's okay. <laughs> you made a good point. I got it up to the curse. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, that's that's the that's the whole thing. I mean, it's it's like if you really want to do something that's correct, you know, don't go after the tobacco farmers or the people smoking the cigarettes. Go after these liars that get on TV and say, no, it's not addictive. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, go after them. And that's just like one of one million things that seem a little bit more important to me rather than if I'm smoking cigarettes. I mean, you know, I know firsthand what cigarette smoke can do to you. So you know, okay, I got it, guys. Uh, yeah, I got the message. I know what what le what's laying in front of me, and right now I'm rolling the dice. I appreciate your interest, but uh, <laughs> quit worrying about it. There you go. My favorite political thing with uh, John was uh, when Reagan wanted to use Pink Houses <laughs> as uh, the well, campaign song. Well, I never did. You know, I never did understand that, and I never did investigate it. You know. It just seems silly to me. I, I, my only comment was to the people who asked me, I said, I don't think he's listened to the song. Yeah, absolutely. He, he didn't listen to the song. So he must have had some young aide 
you know, say, hey, this would be good. Yeah. I'm sure he never heard that song. Yeah. I listen to John Mellencamp yeah, when yeah. I drop acid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> All right, John, we got to thank you for stopping by. This was a, a thrill. Awesome. I appreciate it. And uh, you'll be doing the in-store Wednesday. Yep. Uh, 7 o'clock-ish, you'll, you'll be playing live. That's uh, Broadway and 66 at Tower Records and Letterman Wednesday night and your birthday Wednesday. So happy birthday in advance. And well, thanks wanna, for coming by. I want right? to th thank this station for supporting me for the last 20 years. Awesome. Is this where I used to come? Like mm. Different yeah, building back yeah, then. Yeah. Different building. Yeah. Yeah, but I remember coming up here when I was like 22 years old. Wow. That must have been with Scott Muni. He was uh, oh, 70 yeah. at the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> back then. What was the other guy's name that was here? Dennis Elson. Dennis Elson. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. That right was a long on. time ago. Well, you guys weren't even born yet, were you? No, no. No, we're just uh, young newbies. guys. Hey, stick around for a few minutes. I do believe we have more VIP passes to see John Mellencamp at Tower Records on Broadway and 66. We'll give those away in just a bit here. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York with Jimi Hendrix, Johnny Lang. Before that, his late is still raining. It's Opie and Anthony. Once again, we got to thank uh, John Mellencamp for coming on in and hanging with us for like an hour. Yeah, cool guy. He was very cool. I, I didn't expect that. I mean, I've heard he's a cool guy, but I didn't expect him to stick around for an hour. That was neat. I think he's right as far as the magazines go and you read interviews about him. A lot of these people, uh, uh, they, they, they just uh, peg him as being a guy that might not be uh, that nice. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. No, not at all. Yeah. I, I didn't get that impression uh, yeah. whatsoever. So cool. But we do have some VI passes to see John Mellencamp, like in the front row when he does his in-store at Tower Records on Wednesday. He's going to be at uh, Broadway and 66 Tower mm -hmm. Records. Uh, I was going to just blow him away on the phone line, but you want to play one of our stupid games for him? Uh, yeah, we could do that. Want to play Ugly Bride? Someone's going to need the Sunday edition of Newsday. Sunday edition of Newsday. Yeah, if you got Sunday's Newsday. Okay. We want to play Ugly Bride. you got to go to the... Uh... <laughs> you need page G27. G27. Okay. All right. That's the only way you can play this game, if you have page G27 out of Sunday's Newsday. All right. And it's a game we like to call Ugly Bride. Ugly Two Bride. 212-757-1027. What, Rick? It's called the Life Section. Oh, oh, it's in the Life Section. Life Section of Newsday. Yeah. Yesterday's Newsday. G27. G27. And we have, like, another eight uh, pairs of tickets to give away to this in-store. So, you know, we just want to have a little fun with this pair, and then we'll we'll probably just blow them, uh, blow them out the regular way on the phones a little later on. Do we explain Ugly Bride here? Uh, yeah, explain it, Anthony. Okay, look in uh, the live section of Sunday's Newsday, page G27, and you'll see uh, the wedding announcements. They got the cute pictures of the brides and grooms uh, in, in wedding dresses and stuff. These are just announcements that people have been married. Well, you know what we're going to ask. <laughs> you have to pick the ugliest bride on the page. And if if you pick the, the one we think is the ugliest bride, and there's a match there, kind of like match game, Yeah, <laughs> we'll give you a pair of tickets to see uh, John Mellencamp at Tower Records there for his in-store. <laughs> in the front row. Yeah, that's, Come the on, that's the winner. That's the winner. I'm, picking, I'm definitely picking her. <laughs> so if you want in on this, 212-757-1027. Also on the way, Matchbox 20 and Sean Mullins uh, doing Lullaby. Did you hear him do Lullaby on Carol Miller's show today? Yeah. It was awesome. Do we have that copy that we can replay real fast? 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York with Matchbox 20, 3 a.m. It's Sophie, it's Anthony, hey. and it's you listening on this lovely Monday afternoon. Are you ready to play Ugly Bride, Anthony? I'm ready. Okay. I have uh, Newsday. Okay. From the life section, page G27. Right. Uh, hello? Wow, it sure is loud in here. Play that organ player. There you go. Hey, pipe it down a little bit. All right, there it is. Uh, you get the wedding section. They got all the pictures of the brides and grooms who have recently been married. Very happy for them. Uh, we, we want you to get the same paper, page G27 out of Sunday's Newsday, and pick the ugly bride. Exactly. And if you pick the same ugly bride that me and Anthony have picked, we will give you VIP passes to see John Cougar. Oh, John Mellencamp. Doesn't like that Cougar anymore. John Mellencamp at Tower Records on Broadway and 66 this coming Wednesday. He's going to be playing live around 7 o'clock as well. All right, Opie, um, I'm thinking right here. Let me see. Look. Oh, without a doubt. You that, got your copy. Yes, right? that without a doubt is but, mine. But that's a close second. Look right here. Yeah, she's a close second. Got to be. So uh, this isn't going to be easy. 
Let's go to the phone and get a contestant for Ugly Bride. Hi, Annie W. Hey, how you doing, man? Good. Who's this? Oh, this is Chrissy Pangea. Where are you calling from, Chrissy? I'm calling from Centerport, Long Island. Hey, my hometown. Right. Hey, we love you guys out here, man. Did Dang. you go to Harbor Fields? I did go to Harbor Fields, as a matter of fact. Let's go Tornadoes. Yes, go <laughs> oh, Tornadoes. Please. All right, you want to play Ugly Bride? I, I do want to play Ugly Bride. All right, you got the Newsday Life section from Sunday with all the lovely wedding photos? Oh, yes, I do. All right, before you pick the Ugly Bride, I must say that there are no Ugly Brides, just bad photographs. Of yes. course. Okay, right. they're all so I'll, beautiful. I'll that one. All right, Chrissy, who do you think is the Ugly Bride? How about we're going to go with Tara Lee? Yeah! Tara Lee! That's Tara it. Lee. That's the one. It was oh close. God. There were a couple of real slobs on the page. Oh, but, my God. Well, actually, Maureen was a close second, the bird lady, but uh, me, and Anthony, lady. me and Anthony definitely think Tara Lee is the ugliest bride. Oh, guys. Hey, we have the same taste in women. Wow, that's pretty Man, I, I hope that's makeup that's making her pasty white, but... <laughs> and look at that forehead. <laughs> wow, that, that must have been extra material for a veil. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, she doesn't have a forehead. She has a five head. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure she uh, looked beautiful at the reception. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure if her, uh, if her groom got drunk enough, uh, anybody would have looked good. You know what I'm saying? All right, very nice. Well, congratulations. You got a pair of tickets to see John Mellencamp at Tower Records. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, Van Halen. It's Sophie and Anthony. I'm looking at the TV, Ant. Yeah. What is going on? Is that impeachment hearings? Is it? No. Uh, what is it? No. They are holding uh, hearings, discussions, to see if they should hold impeachment hearings. <laughs> they are hearings to see if they should hear hearings. Ah, uh, are you serious? Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha -ching, there's more tag Cha-ching, cha-ching. Out the window. What about social security? Oh, they got it. You know what? Look at this old... I say screw social security. There's, a, what, a $70 billion surplus? Surplus. And the Republicans want to cut our taxes? Yeah. I like that. I can handle that, and actually. I'm like, no, I'll give it to get social security. Uh, whatever. Screw that. It's yeah, I, I I was watching some of that this morning, and everyone's going. It must be a bipartisan uh, hearing. They, we must agree on certain issues of the Constitution. They're all a bunch of hypocrites. Both sides. I've decided. Yeah. Because and it's easy to to tell. Just switch the situation around. Republican president, and uh, uh, the Congress is predominantly Democratic. Let's say. And the same thing happens to a Republican president. Every one of these guys would be on the exact opposite side of the fence they're on right now. Period. That makes That's a, it. You make a good point. It's totally partisan. I, I like uh, what Larry Flint's got going on. A million bucks. That's brilliant. He's given away a million dollars to anybody who could come up uh, with any uh, sexual past of, of uh, Congress. Yes, you got to prove it. Yeah, but if you can prove you had an affair with one of these guys, you'll get a million bucks from Larry. Wouldn't that be great? Larry rocks. Larry Flint is funny. He really rocks. And, of course, uh, the big news. Everyone's talking about the Yankees. Yeah. Going to be playing the Tribe tomorrow night. David Wells on the mound. The Tribe. What? what? Is that politically incorrect still, or what? Well, it's very... You notice the further... If, if they get closer to the World Series, hopefully they won't. But uh, the closer they do get... More Indians stuck getting all PO'd. Yeah. That logo. Mm. <laughs> Very degrading to our people. <laughs> Big smile and Indian. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, as they use that to their advantage and they open up their casinos, tax free casinos. That is just making money that we would have made if white men didn't take our land. <laughs> uh, we still name our children after things that are close and precious to us. This is my son, Double Down, <laughs> and my daughter, Little Shooting Craps. <laughs> we are going to kick the tribes out. Oh, yeah. Come on. Now, a lot of people have noticed that I've jumped on the Yankee bandwagon. Well, no, I did say two weeks ago that I am a true Mets fan. Yeah. And I love the Mets and all, but I said when the Mets get knocked out of it, that I will, uh, you know, get together with the rest of the city and, uh, and and root for the Yanks. Simple as that. It's very nice to have two sporting teams mm -hmm. in baseball that you can really you know, get behind if one peters out. Yes, it, it is nice. Yeah. Do you want to play Piss Off an Indian today? Mm, Piss Off Indian. We did Texas. We got those Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, we did. The cowboys in Texas. Now it's time for the Indian. Well, actually, a couple of you guys out there got uh, taken to the cleaners by the yeah. Texans. You didn't know how to play the game right, and you got... He got used badly. Yeah, that was rough. 
So you want to try to play uh, piss off an Indian today? Yes. All we right. will call engines. <laughs> we'll, we'll put you on the phone with a random engine, <laughs> and you can piss them off. Yeah. How's that sound? Sounds good. Two one two seven five seven one zero two seven. If you think you got what it takes for that. Also, uh, while we're talking about the Yankees, don't forget we have field box seats to the next two Yankee playoff games to be auctioned off tomorrow during the Dave Herman Rock and Roll Morning Show. This is cool. All proceeds go to the Children's Health Fund, and the games are Tuesday and Wednesday night at the stadium, of course. Right. All right, so we'll play Piss Off a Texan. If you got something else, Indian. give us a call. Uh, uh, sorry, Piss Off an in Engine. Mm. Yes, I'm sorry about that. That's okay. And we do got the Black Crows. Sophie and Anthony just rocking through uh, another fine show here. Had John Mellencamp on earlier. Yeah. That was a lot of fun, and uh, his birthday is Wednesday, and uh, he's going to celebrate his birthday by being on Letterman Wednesday night, and also he's doing that in-store at Tower Records on... Broadway and 66th Street. We got some VIP P, uh, passes for a few more of our listeners this afternoon. Yeah, we're going to play a couple of games. He's going to be performing live too Wednesday around 7 o'clock at Tower Records, so it's going to be a must see without a doubt. You want to give away some passes playing uh, Piss Off an Indian? Yeah, we're going to play Piss Off an Indian and honor the Yankees playing the tribe. Uh, actually, we got uh, like six people standing by to play that lovely game. Now, we played it with the Texans last week. Yeah. And there were a couple uh, ones that stood out, but in general, most people uh, got used pretty one bad guy, by the Texans. W one guy uh, just got totally slapped, bitch slapped by some guy on the phone. Yeah, by the time he hung up, he felt pretty uh, useless when he was supposed to piss off the Texan, and the Texan just got the uh, better of him. Nailed him. He, he, he turned the tide on him. So, yeah. so we're going to do that. Also, uh, you got an interesting little article there from the Sunday Post. Well, the Sunday Post, uh, once again, doing some investigative journalism, Opie, finding the best and worst subway restrooms <laughs> I, I, in New York. I don't even go to the bathroom in the subway. It's no, scary. who would? Yeah. Now, some of the best ones, I've noticed uh, they're all locked. They say it's near a, a str main street. It, it's usually left locked. This one here, two cops were stationed nearby, Church Avenue in Brooklyn. Workers actually spotted mopping and restocking supplies. Wow. Or um, Leffert's Boulevard, Queens. Uh, it had toilet paper and soap. Smelled a little because of inadequate ventilation. And it's always kept locked with a key available to token booth. Okay. Those are some of the best ones. But i got to hear about the worst ones. You know where the worst ones are. <laughs> All right, let's start with Roosevelt Avenue, Queens. Oh, man. The E, F, G, and R. Both men's and women's restrooms were flooded, smelled of urine, and had trash strewn on the floor and in the toilets. No soap or toilet paper. Love Men it. were soliciting sex in the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> Guys are just pigs. They don't care. Yeah. Downtown Broadway, Nassau. Uh, toilets were broken. Full of waste and attracting flies. Ugh. No evidence of recent cleaning. Ugh. How about Parkchester and uh, East 177th Street, Bronx? The bathrooms reeked of urine and feces. <laughs> toilet seats were caked with feces. <laughs> and toilet bowls in the women's restrooms overflowed with unflushed urine. <laughs> mm -mm. Yum, yum, give me some. East New York, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Men were busy having sex in the two stalls with others eagerly awaiting their turn. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Guys are slobs, man. <laughs> Guys were ha having sex. Men were busy having sex. Uh, now, what uh, restroom is this? East New York, Brooklyn. East egg. New York, Brooklyn, eh? We should get someone to go into, the, into that bathroom with a cell phone. Someone who really wants to see John Mellencamp Wednesday. If someone calls us from that bathroom. And, and tells us what is going on. I do believe we have some VIP passes to see John Mellencamp at okay. our records. That sounds fun. Where's the location again? East New York, uh, Brooklyn, A. I don't know. That doesn't really give you much of a... Uh... Well, it's a subway stop, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's disgusting. I guess any one of these. Hunts Point Station, Bronx? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> the cramped women's restroom was dank and smelly. <laughs> And so were the patrons. <laughs> the floor was wet, graffiti covered the walls, the sink was filthy, and there was no toilet paper or towels or soap. All right. Feces. <laughs> More caked feces. Caked feces? I love that. Caked feces. Oh, man. All right. You want to get a listener in one of these bathrooms? Yeah. And we'll have some fun with them, and then we'll send them to John Mellencamp? Yeah. If you got a cell phone and you could get your ass to one of these bathrooms, give us a call, 212-757-1027. 
Hey, surprise, you know, it could happen. Never our, know. Our listeners are just crazy enough to maybe do this. It's Opie, it's Anthony. Hey. And uh, something exciting is going on behind the scenes here, Anthony. Working. We're working on something that could be very, very cool. We had John Mellencamp in here earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we know for a fact he's doing an in store at Tower Records on Broadway and 66th Street Wednesday afternoon. Right. He's going to get down there after he tapes Letterman and he's going to perform a few tunes. Mm hmm. Me and Anthony had such a great interview with him, and really, you know, we just got along with the guy. We're starting to think that maybe uh, we should broadcast our show from Tower Records Wednesday. We haven't met our listeners yet. Yeah. It'd be a great opportunity to get out there and uh, see what you guys are all about, and you guys could uh, see what we're about, and we could check out John Mellencamp uh, together. That'd be cool. Not only that, we're working on this. Nothing is set in stone, but it's starting to come together slowly but surely here. We may broadcast John Mellencamp live on the radio Wednesday mm. when he does this little acoustic show at Tower Records. Uh huh. So I'm just giving the listeners a little heads up. This could be very, very cool. Well, we got to wait for the engineers to see if they can do this. They're uh, wheeling and dealing behind the scenes still. It's definitely not set in stone, but um, things are coming together. All right. Mel and Camp will definitely be there Wednesday for the in-store, and he definitely will be playing. Now, the two things still to be figured out, are we going to do our show live Wednesday from Tower Records? Yeah. And uh, will we be able to broadcast John Mel and Camp's uh, performance live here on NEW? Well, if I was a betting man... I would say yes. I think it's all going to come together, but... so That's what I would say, too. I think it would be so cool, because we, we've been here for four months, and we haven't been out yet. They don't let us out. Well, they were kind of scared at first, but now, uh, you know, the the audience is warming up to us a little bit. A little. Just a little. <laughs> and uh, we'd like to meet some people, see what you guys are all about. I think it would be cool. And I think this would be uh, the perfect opportunity to do that, to finally get our faces out there. Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday afternoon. So you've got to keep listening to NEW to see if, you know, how this all comes together. Okay. All right? Uh, we, we also have people standing by to play Piss Off an Indian. All right. And you got a weird story in the paper about how they're putting uh, beepers on babies or something like that? You know when you go into a store, like a, a department store, and they got those big white tags hanging from the jackets and stuff so you can't run through the door. It goes like, beep, 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 beep. Yes. They are now sealing up the baby's umbilical cords with these devices. They snap it on the umbilical cord and put them back in their little cribs so no one could steal them. This is what it has come down to. You need, like, low jacks for your babies now. <laughs> it, it's amazing it's gotten to that. Why not just tattoo one of those uh, UPC codes on them? Yeah. And you know, scan them. Scanner. Yeah. <laughs> Beep like a checkout thing at the hospital. You can just check your baby out. <laughs> Beep. You know we're not too far from that, actually. I bet we're not. No. It might come in handy for, you know, medical records or something. They're saying um, we're right a uh, around the corner from everyone having their own website, like when they're born. Really? And like a phone number. Like Have all your info on on a website? Yeah, and when like when you're born, you're going to be given like a, a phone number, like you're given a uh, social security number. Mm. And that'll be your number, because everyone's going to have their own number eventually. Remember when 1984... Was here and everyone's going, hey, it's 1984, man, big brother, got to look out, people are watching you, the government could check up on you at all times. Everyone laughed. Yeah. You never really understood how it could ever get like that. Well, it's starting to sink in. It's getting closer and closer. Me and Anthony, when we're having a slow day, we have these laptops in the studio. Mm -hmm. We just check out cameras that are on, you know, around New York. You won't believe how many cameras are watching you. I saw a whole TV show and read in the paper. You can't, you're on camera in New York City more than you're off camera. Some, no way. The, the I didn't truth, even know man, that. Whether you're walking down the street or, dude, look out this window. What do you see right there? It's a camera. I swear to God, you probably can't get your head around here enough, no. but there's a camera right there looking at the window. And it's not on our building. When you go into a store, any store you go into, pretty much from a bodega to a uh, Saks. There's a camera on you at all times. Yeah. Banks walking down the street. I could punch up Times Square. I could punch up Madison Square Garden. Just looking at people. That is wild. You're on camera more than you're not these days. When you're driving, you're on camera. You know, I read a story about a small town, I think it's in the Midwest, where the whole town has a camera. Yeah. And uh, the police force, most of them just kind of sit in a building and, and just stare at cameras to see what's going on. Uh-huh. And you cannot go anywhere in this town without having a camera on you. And that's how they keep track of what's going on with the crime and stuff. 
The only difference in New York is they're not like run by one central agency. Right. Like there's security cameras for just stores, which the store owner uses, and traffic cameras that maybe the news uses, and uh, various security cameras, but they're not centralized. I'm not saying they can't be. Mm -hmm. How do you know? That might be the next step. Exactly. All I know is I do a lot of driving in Midtown. Me and Anthony joke about this. I'm going to open up my mailbox one of these days, and how many tickets am I going to have? <laughs> like 50 are going to fall out for running red lights, Yeah, which is another thing with that, well, that makes, the camera's up for. What's interesting, that makes you paranoid. When Anthony drives into town, like when we drive anywhere else, Jersey or the Island or in Westchester or something, Anthony will blow red lights like no problem, like hey, blowing out birthday candles. It was yellow a minute ago, I'm sure. But in Midtown, <laughs> Anthony's paranoia gets the best of him, and I haven't seen you run a red light yet. And, no. I go, and I go, Ann, why aren't you on the red lights? Well, you never know. I don't want to get that photograph in the mail. It works. I'll tell you, it works just thinking that they might be out there watching you. But I'm the other way. I'm like, screw it. So I honestly might have a FedEx package come to my house too with a pile of pictures. So. You know what it was with me? After so many years of, of playing police Pac-Man because my license was suspended and this, and it all derived from like... A, a bald tire or uh, my inspection was overdue <laughs> and it cascaded into me being wanted for murder for something <laughs> that would always be the way it was oh uh, yeah this was um i had a, a tail light out uh, 18 years ago eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars please <laughs> come on now what is police pack man anthony that's where you drive from point a to point b not necessarily the easiest and fastest way but the way where, that the police uh, don't take. I see. That's police Pac-Man. It's usually played on nights like New Year's Eve. In and out of neighborhoods and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Side streets, back streets. Right. Things like that. You drive nice, slow, obey the rules, and get yourself home. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your wife laughing? Oh, and we're... oh okay. She knows. Yeah, all right. Uh, but, but it took a long time for me to get my license back in order, and it, it's been, you know, knock wood, squeaky clean. Yeah. For um, three, four months now. Very nice. So <laughs> that's, that's lovely, Anthony. I've, I'm insuring uh, my lug nut yeah. this week. Yeah. See, what you got to do, if you speed, you got to do what I do. You got to speed in different states. Oh, yeah. So you wound up getting tickets in I got, Vermont. I got um, a speeding ticket in Connecticut. Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Yeah. I got four in the last two and a half years, and they haven't caught up with me yet. Look at me telling everyone on the radio. They will. Oh, they <laughs> haven't got me yet. Ooh. A 27 WNEW, the Rock of New York, our new pal, John Mellencamp. Your life is now off his uh, latest CD that is going to be released tomorrow, I believe. And we had John Mellencamp on the show earlier today. Had a lot of fun with him. Yeah. And going into, uh, a lot of people warned us that... You know, he has a short fuse, and don't call him John Cougar and all this stuff. The guy was so down-to-earth and cool, it wasn't even funny. Yeah, I think it's the writers. They give him the uh, bad rap. Yeah, no, he was uh, he was a good guy. We had a yeah. lot of fun with him. And uh, we're trying to get the details together, but things are starting to shape up here. Yeah. Let me tell you what's definitely happening. John Mellencamp's doing an in-store Wednesday at Tower Records on Broadway and 66th Street. He's going to be there around 7, 7.15. He's going to play a few songs. He's going to do a little in-store, sign copies of his CD, and play. Mm -hmm. All right? That alone is cool. Uh, we're trying to jump jump in on this, me and you. Because yeah. we haven't been out uh, yet. Uh, we were talking to John off mic. He sounded cool. And we're like, what the hell? Let's go down there and broadcast our show. So it's looking like me and you are going to broadcast live, our first live appearance down here in New York mm -hmm. at Tower Records. So people could stop on by, check out John, see what we're all about. We'd like to see what you guys are all about. And the final piece of the puzzle, uh, we're going to try to put John Mellencamp on the air performing live from Tower Records Wednesday. Now that would be cool. Yeah, the whole thing would be cool. Yeah. So keep listening to NEW for uh, details as we put this thing together, okay? All right. Uh, we got... Somebody standing on uh, hold here wants to play Piss Off in India in honor of the Yankees playing the Tribe tomorrow. David Wells on the mound. We played Piss Off a Texan. You didn't think Piss Off a Texan went that well in? I think the Texans uh, beat up on our New Yorkers. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Yankees obviously kicked the crap out of the baseball team, but our, our callers couldn't do battle no, they, with the Texans. I think it was like 50-50. Like, half the New Yorkers, you know, got got a good piece of the Texans' ass. Yeah. But there were a couple Texans that fought back and fought back hard. Yeehaw. So we're looking for um, better results this week as we play Piss Off in India. Okay. This will be the first one. Let's see how this guy does. Matt, you want to play Piss Off in India? Sure do. All right. You think you could do a good job for us? 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can piss someone off. That's not a problem. Well, some of the guys last week said the exact same thing, and they were weak. Yeah, those guys are stiff. I got it. I got what it takes. Are you ready to lay into these guys? I'm, I'm ready to lay into these guys. All right, here we go, bro. All right. Mirror's Marketplace Restaurant, good evening. Hey, good evening. Hey, you follow the Cleveland Indians? Yes, I do. Yeah, you do. Good. You're a big Indians fan? Uh, yeah. Dude, how pissed are you guys that you guys could have been the Atlanta Braves, man, with that pitching staff, except for one drunken boat rider, Bob Yohita, huh? Pardon me? Just one sudden, that's all it took. Yeah? Just wiped out, you guys. You guys could have been great, but now you guys, you know, middle of the road, you know. You do get it, you guys do suck, don't you? I mean, that staff is pretty horrendous. But one drunken boat ride, that's all it took. Pardon most me? You guys, most of you guys are drunk in Cleveland, aren't you, anyway? Drunk, go bowling. You guys lost your football team. I mean, you guys are pretty lame, aren't you? I mean... In Cleveland, Mistake by the Lake, that's what you guys are called, right? Who is this? Who do you think it is? This is Bob Yohita. I'm still pissed that I'm not playing the Indians anymore, man. Are you Damn serious? Right, going out drinking. Are of you? course I am. I don't know what to do with myself now. All the bowling alleys don't let me in anymore. I drink too much. You should drink some more. Well, I'm from Cleveland, man. we got to drink. That's all those do out there, right? That's it. That and, you know, scoop fat chicks. That's all. That's all there is. Like that's that goofy-ass thing on top of that hat. That's what Change I'm saying. that feather band to an ace bandage. What? That goofy-ass yeah. Indian. Is that Bobby O'Hita's last smile when he slams that dock? Yeah, no, ah, dude, I think he hung up. I know. I think he hung up, too. <laughs> you were just getting warmed up, too, man. I, I know, man. <laughs> that was awesome, man. Why, well, thank you. You want to go see John Mellencamp? Sure. All right, Tower Records, Wednesday. He's going to be performing live starting around 7. We're going to give you some VIP passes. That's the Tower right, cool. Records on Broadway and 66th Street. Congratulations. Thanks, man. All right, hold on the line, and we'll get some info from you. All right, cool. Opie and Anthony. <laughs> 1027 NEW. Sophie and Anthony, I can't believe we can't get anyone to go into those bathrooms, Anthony. Oh, I I'm just stunned myself. <laughs> we can't get anybody to go to Hunts Point Station in the Bronx? No. Nope. To go check out the toilet in the uh, subway? No, I guess the Post ran a story. Worst bathrooms in the New York area, and that's one of them. Yeah. And uh, a bunch of people call and go, <laughs> there's not a chance in hell that you would get a white person to go in any of those bathrooms. My buddy Tom called and he said, you think you're going to get a white guy to go to Hunts Point with a cell phone and leave his car? Yeah, why not? Because you probably wouldn't, he wouldn't get past boot, doot, doot, <laughs> before he just got pummeled. <laughs> it was for the John Mellencamp VIP passes. We wanted to see how bad these bathrooms really were, so we wanted to, you know, get one of our listeners in the bathroom to describe it. That's all. Maybe if we're giving away Puff Daddy passes, <laughs> we give people uh, to go down in, the, in that bathroom. And but how does your uh, friend Tom know about these bathrooms? He, he used to he used to live the, out there. Yeah. In that area, he said that when there was a, a what was it a meat packer strike? He was talking about a meat delivery strike. He goes, that's the same neighborhood where the people during the strike. Went to the Bronx Zoo, stole a gorilla, killed it and skinned it, and hung the meat in the window. Whoa. <laughs> Man, that's hard. <laughs> you gotta love it. And he's talking about the hookers are just naked in that area? He goes, the hookers walk around completely naked. They don't even like... Not even under the guise that they're regular women just walking around. Yeah. They're just naked. What you want, baby? Wow. Well, what you need, baby? East New York and Brooklyn. Another uh, great bathroom. <laughs> Parkchester and East 177th Street in the Bronx. Caked feces on the toilet seat. Man. And, of course... Where's uh, the bathroom where the guys have sex in the stall while you're waiting to use it? Roosevelt <laughs> Avenue, Queens. <laughs> they said men were soliciting sex in the men's room. But uh, in East New York, Brooklyn, the A. Yeah. Men were busy having sex in two stalls while others eagerly waited their turn. <laughs> it says, e in the favor, eagerly. Like, this guy must have been watching this and went... Yeah, these guys are really eager. Done yet? <laughs> Come on. I can't understand why we can't get any of our listeners to go into these bathrooms. Oh, yeah. I'm just, I don't understand why, Opie. All right. Would well, you go down to one of those bathrooms? Hell no. Mm. I'm not that brave. No. We should send Rick. <laughs> hey, Rick, you want to go down there? Sure, I'll go. You could go to the East New York one. <laughs> Rick will go? Eagerly awaiting your turn. Will you go like tomorrow? Yeah. Wow, Rick will go for us. All right. Which one? We got to pick out the nastiest one. Do you want a bodyguard? No. No? Okay. I would say Parkchester and East 177th Street in the Bronx is the worst. Is that the one where they're having the sex in the stalls while people eagerly await? No, no, that's uh, Brooklyn. 
But this is the one where just like it looks like they had a crap party in here from what they're saying. <laughs> it looks like they were having a, a, a crap fight <laughs> with each other for some reason. Hi, Carl. <laughs> It's just caked on everything for what they're saying. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. You really will do this tomorrow, Rick? I'll do it. You don't want any support team or anything? Really? No. Wow, no. he's pretty brave. All right, we'll uh, get into Maybe the... he's familiar with the... Uh, <laughs> what are you saying there, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> He'll do it for us. All right, cool. So he's going to take one for the team. <laughs> Maybe literally. Very nice. <laughs> Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Rosie. Listen, I want to tell you something. I thought your boss, Gary, was a big ass wipe because he didn't think farts were funny. Yeah. And, and so what I did this weekend, when nobody was around, I got naked and I straddled my 1999 tape recorder and I let one rip. And I was afraid that I was going to dookie dookie when I did it, but I concentrated <laughs> and I grunted and I let one rip just for Gary Wall and it was so liberating. <laughs> Gary, get a life, baby. Farts are funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you left one of the farts this weekend? Yes, I did. I did. I, I had to put in the tape recorder because I can't do it on command. All right. You're annoying. Uh, we're going to play some of those farts in a little while, though. Great. I'm listening. All right. Bye. You guys are great. Thank you. Now, Anthony, oh. how many uh, fart sounds did he get on his voicemail over the weekend? I don't know. It was a lot, though. Well over 50, I think. Well over 50? It's Opie and Anthony. Hey. Uh, I figured out uh, Gary's uh, voicemail. All right, we could play back some of his messages. Yeah, I could get into the archives. All right. Um, if you weren't listening Friday, we played the top five bits that our boss hated. Yeah. And he had a problem with a couple of the farting bits we did last week. Yeah, I don't know why. And uh, we had explained to our boss that fart equals funny. It's like the first rule of comedy that everyone learns. Right. So then we invited the listeners to, over the weekend, if they felt one building up, to call our boss's voicemail and leave a fart. Or your comments machine. about farting yeah. on his machine. Well, when we sat down for our meeting today, the boss said he got like 60 <laughs> voicemails from drunk listeners farting into his voicemail while he's trying to do business. That's showing him. <laughs> That's showing him. So he saved like uh, 10 of the archives here. All right. So let's play him. Gary Wall. You have 10 old archived messages. First message. Hi, Gary. This is Rosie. Thoughts are funny, you ass wipe. End of message. Next message. Hi, Gary. This is Diane Martin, and I just want to say one thing. Farts are funny. <laughs> End of message. Next message. Hi, Gary. This is Betty Boop. I think farts are wonderful. I love Skid Rocks. I love your guys. I love the show. But I don't love that you don't love Fox. Fox, a beautiful baby. Brother. Jesus. End of message. Yeah. Next message. <laughs> End of Rider. message. Night Rider? Yeah. Next message. Fart, 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 fart,
messages. <laughs> Name many. And there you have it. Wow. Our, our boss's voicemail from the weekend. He had to come in Monday and deal with that. She sounded hot. Yeah, he's trying to <laughs> he's trying to set up a live broadcast with John Mellencamp at Tower Records, and he goes to his voicemail expecting important calls, and he had to deal he with gets it. farts. He gets farts oh, wow. from our listeners. You guys rule. <laughs> Definitely. Sophie and Anthony hey. had a fine show today. A good start to another work week here. A lot of fun, yeah. Gotta thank John Mellencamp for stopping by. He was awesome. He opened up and it was very, very cool to meet him for the first time. Yeah. Uh don't forget, he'll be doing that in store Wednesday at Tower Records on Broadway and sixty sixth Street. And he'll be performing live some acoustic numbers with some of his buds at around seven, seven thirty ish. And we're working out doing our show down there. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to work out all the details where, where me and Anthony broadcast live so we can finally meet you guys, see what you're about, you can see what we're about. And also, uh, we're working on the details of broadcasting John Mellencamp's performance on the radio Wednesday ah. at 7.30. So ah. just stay, stay tuned to NEW for all the details on that. Right. Ugly Bride was a huge success today on the Opie and Anthony show. Thanks for playing that. I think that could become a weekly event. Yeah. Just save your uh, Sunday news days. Yes. Because they put all the pictures of the brides in there, or, the brides and grooms. Or actually, next week we'll play with the Jersey uh, folks as well. Oh, we could do that too, sure. Yeah, we'll get the Jersey papers. Yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, Piss Off an Indian, pretty good start so far. Yeah, that we'll, guy was good. We'll get more people to do that uh, tomorrow and, uh, you know, the rest of the week. Hopefully you got some chops to you. You uh -huh. can call in for that tomorrow. Yeah. See a lot of different little things going on on the show. Of course. And then we got some guys <laughs> that want to check out some of these bathrooms tomorrow. We had a story on um, worst bathrooms in New York. Yeah. You want to give out those locations again just in case people want to get a heads up and maybe get to the bathroom for, for early on on the show tomorrow? Well, these are all the uh, worst bathrooms uh, in the subways. We got Roosevelt Avenue, Queens, the E, F, G, and R, I guess, are really bad. Downtown Broadway, Nassau, the 4, the 2, the A, and the J. Park Chester and East 177th Street. That's in the, in the Bronx. The 6th train. You're, you're going to see a lot of caked feces okay. from what they're saying. Okay. East New York, Brooklyn, the A train. Men busy having sex in the two stalls with others eagerly awaiting their turn. <laughs> and the Hunts Point Station in the I Bronx. I hope someone gets to that bathroom tomorrow. That's my <laughs> favorite. I love it. Yeah, okay. Is that it? Hunts Point Station in the Bronx. All right. Another one really bad. But these guys want to go on uh, a safari, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of people. So if you could get your butt to one of those uh, bathrooms for tomorrow's show, you know. First